Hello everyone. I'm excited for today's episode, because today we get to solve arguably one of if not the hardest problem of ethics. The problem of evil. I have left this problem as an exercise to someone, so if you're that someone and watching this without having solved it yet, go away unless you give up. Otherwise, let's start. This video will spark discussions and controversies, I already know it, but we must carry on nonetheless. First off, the problem of evil states. If there is something which is all-powerful, all-knowing, and all-loving, then that entity can get rid of evil, knows how to get rid of evil, and would get rid of evil. Yet evil still exists, meaning such entity must be non-existent. However, we showed way back in the day that existence is omnipotent, omniscient, and omnibenevolent. Therefore we fall into a problem, which is the problem of evil. Many tried to solve this problem with different explanations, but so far we have never reached an answer more satisfying than free will. In fact, free will is not the answer to the problem, which still remains unsolved. Until now, I am glad to say that today, the problem of evil will be solved once and for all. First of all, to solve the problem of evil we must keep in mind what we said last time, evil is not an entity. Evil is the absence of good, where there isn't good there is evil, not because they're two separate entities, but because one is the lack of another. This thing is proved intuitively by the fact that good and evil, being two exact opposites, have no property in common at all, not even existence, therefore one of them must exist, and the other one must not. Second, we have to keep in mind that goodness is not different from existence. Goodness, in fact, coincides with the end, finality itself. And finality is fully existence. Therefore existence is goodness itself. By this we can determine that existence is the opposite of evil. Now, remember this, existence is what differentiates something from nothing. Without existence, there would be only nothing, and by replacing existence with goodness this makes sense, as if there was no good, there would be only evil. The answer now becomes clearer, because if existence got rid of evil, then there would be no evil. And if there was no evil, there would be only good, but goodness is existence, and therefore if evil was removed, only existence would exist, and nothing else. Nothing else but existence. But then, what would existence differentiate nothingness from? That's right. What I am saying is that, the world, intended as the universe, is differentiated from existence. It is differentiated from existence, because it has evil, it has lacks, existence has not. Perfection is the state of lacking nothing, existence has no lacks, therefore it is perfect, while the world isn't, and therefore has lacks. In other words, if existence were to remove all evil, all lacks from reality, then there wouldn't be anything other than existence, and creation wouldn't be possible. Evil is, thus, necessary for the world to exist. Without it, there would be only existence, but nothing existing. But Thomas, you are wrong, because your explanation needs existence to be not omnipotent. Because if existence was omnipotent then it would be able to create a world with no evil regardless of whether it makes sense logically or not. I knew someone would have brought this up, but I already solved this much time ago. You have to understand that omnipotence isn't able to defy the laws of logic. If that was possible, an omnipotent being would be omnipotent even by not being omnipotent. Because it is a logical fallacy but an omnipotent being doesn't care, right? The fact is, omnipotence is built upon logic, like everything in this world, 
and the paradox of omnipotence is just a regular paradox. If you removed omnipotence it would still work. It's not about omnipotence. The scenarios in the paradox literally cannot occur. Can a skill builder make something so complex not even him can comprehend and replicate it? No? Then he's not skilled enough to make it complex enough, yes? Then he's not skilled enough to replicate it. Does this mean skilled builders don't exist? No, of course this fucking doesn't, it's stupid. I really don't get how you retards don't understand how this paradox goes against itself and not against omnipotence. Anyway, this was it, that's it for this chapter. We have went through a lot, but we haven't finished yet. In the next chapter, we will apply ethics to humans, and we will figure out how a human will be able to reach Emileki, what makes a human good or evil, and much more. Stay tuned. See you then, be well.